being approximately 6.30. We'll call this meeting to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is the acceptance of the agenda. So, so moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the next item is to meet the applicants. As I look out through the audience, there's some people who we all know. Uh, however, if you haven't been here before, or if, or if, if uh, there was a uh, more than one person going for that particular opening, we've asked that you come in. Uh, just in very briefly, a uh, uh, minute, whatever you introduce. Who you are, introduce yourself, why you're interested in serving that particular board. Sure. And that would be it. Sean. When, when you get to, can we just move one applicant up forward if we could to We're the top, top of the list? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, Tom Yardley would be the first one. Tom, thank you for coming in. Thanks very much to the board, Chairman. Uh, I'm, uh, my name is uh, Tom Yardley. Uh, I'm uh, uh, put in uh, a request to be on the zoning subcommittee. Um, I am relatively new to the area, but I professionally have some experience of, of zoning. I've worked on zoning codes across the different municipalities up and down the eastern seaboard. Um, Situate is a very uh, attractive town. I was, I was very happy to move here. Uh, and I wanted to contribute some of my time and hopefully uh, experience to, to this committee um, uh, and, and, and assist. So uh, if anyone has any questions of me or would like any more information, feel free to ask me. Thank just, you. Just yeah, just clarify, this is the, the review committee, not the ZBA. Yeah, this right. is the committee that we formed to, to yep. review the zoning yep. laws. You all are zoning bylaws. And Kim, how many are on there now? So that's not in a, okay. So this is fresh, and it'll be. There's actually, there's actually, there's seven people who are to be appointed. Um, there's only one spot that will be available because um, two spots are for planning, two spots are for zoning, one is for um, board of selectmen, and um, the third, the the sixth one is from the zoning or the bylaw review committee, which I believe leaves one opening for this. So there's only one opening. Correct. So of this of this list of names, we will eventually one, two, choose one. Three, Correct. Four. Okay. So that's only because of the yeah. The way it's, uh, but it's right. a number of people have applied, so that's what I'm saying. <coughs> sure. Number from okay. one position. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That's a good example of what a minute and a half is. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank very much. We'll make an appointment later on tonight, but no okay. need for you to be here. Okay. Great. Thanks a lot. Thanks Thank for seeing you. me first. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Next, uh, I don't see Steve Dorsey here, do I? No, yes, I do. I do see Steve Dorsey here. <laughs> Steve, how are you? Fine, Joe. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, Steve, beautification. Yes, uh, thank you, Joe, members of the board. Uh, my name's Steve Dorsey. I've lived in Situate for 27, 27 years. Uh, and I recently saw an ad in the paper for an adopt-a-lot, which I thought were prized possessions. So I have a, a little adopt-a-lot now, and during the process of, uh, of meeting the members of the, the, the commission, I was asked if I'd be interested in serving. Uh, and I haven't done anything for the town since I was on the advisory committee many years ago, so I thought it was time to do something again, and I'd be very pleased to serve. Thank you, Steve. What, what, what yard, which uh, lot is yours? Uh, adopt uh, the one on yeah, the driftway gotcha. in, in New Kent Street. Looks nice. Thanks. That's a dangerous one. <laughs> yeah. Franny. I saw Franny McMillan here. Yep, there you are, Franny. Thank you, You're welcome. I don't think so. I don't know. Uh, my name is Fran McMillan, and uh, I'm currently an associate on the Waterways Committee. Um, I've operated a business, marine business, in the harbor now for the last 22 years. And um, working in the harbor, you develop a pretty deep appreciation of Situate and the harbor and what we've got to offer residents and outside people. In that process, I've probably promoted it a little more than I've promoted my business, but uh, that's the way it works in Situate. It's a, it's a great place to be. And I feel that um, I could contribute quite a bit to the, uh, the waterways, being from the business community. Right now, there really is no representative, I believe, that um, is involved in the actual workings of the harbor on the business end of it. So. 
That's why I'd love to um, pick up this position on the waterways. Thank you. Wood? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, house. Again, waterways. House. I'm a member of, uh, I was a member of the Situate Marine Park Commission when that got started, and I've continued to sit on the Waterways Commission. I'm a resident of 25 years. I've served on the Conservation Commission, and I thought it was time to serve on the Waterways Commission since I've enjoyed uh, participating and working with members of the, of the group. Uh, I am a boater, and uh, I am a member of the Coast Guard Auxiliary and the Power Squadron. Have you, do you go to their meetings and have you? Yes. You, you have? I've been going for the last few years. Oh, great. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Steve Svensson. Okay. Uh, Rob McCary. I know Rob's here. I saw him. Rob's here. Rob, how are you? I'm doing well. Hi, everyone. Uh, Rob McCary, um, uh, want to participate in the uh, Recreation Commission. Um, have done a lot of work uh, in the last 12 years uh, since we moved here uh, to Situate. I have three young boys, um, and um, uh, I've done a lot of work uh, for the schools uh, in the last 12 years, as well as um, the uh, youth programs, uh, sports programs uh, in uh, between soccer, baseball, basketball, et cetera. And I uh, just want to contribute uh, to the commission. So. Thank you. Questions from the board? Well, I, I've known Rob for a number of years, and he's, we've both coached, but he's coached more than me, I think, because he has three kids that have been going through every sport. He's coached basketball, soccer, baseball. I think probably not lacrosse is probably the only thing. So <laughs> very active, very active with, with school initiatives, with cleanup initiatives in town, and he's a real go-getter. So I think he'd be a, a great addition to the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chris Roberts is unable to be here tonight. Uh, Dick Dennis. Steve McLaughlin, uh, Conservation or Zoning Review Committee. Steve, thank you. Sure. I'll make it real quick on the Zoning Review Committee. I've probably worked with the Zoning Bylaws in Situate for about 25 years. Uh, worked with the Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals through that, uh, being a developer in town. I've done a lot of work here. I work with the regulations every day, Saturdays and Sundays included. My wife doesn't like that, but. Um, I kind of know them inside and out, and if the town is going to redo them, I'd like to be involved, again, from a business standpoint. Um, it would be great to make sure that the regulations don't have hidden bombs in them, and that's why I'd like to be involved. In conservation? Conservation I served on uh, a year ago. I'm an associate member presently. Uh, I've done all the schooling for conservation since, uh, since I first went on. I uh, still haven't missed a meeting in two years. Not to say that I won't miss a meeting if I get put on, but uh, I try to take it very seriously, and I want to get on to help the people in the town of Situate and make sure that the regulations are administered fairly across the board. That's it. Thank you. From the board, questions, comments? Nope. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Chris Diorio, zoning review. Jennifer Arum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Jennifer Orham. I live in Situate for 11 years, and I work for the town of Cohasset. I work for the selectmen, the town manager, but I'm also the assistant clerk on the zoning board. Um, and I've sat through about 90 hearings, read many of the bylaws back and forth in all surrounding towns, and would love to be a part of reviewing the review process. Um, I can see a lot of things we could do, and we've already done, and I'd love to be a part of it. Thank you. Okay. What do you do? Is it assistant clerk? Is that your position? Um, that's one of them, yes. Okay. I, yes. Great. Great perspective. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, John Yowley, we've already uh, heard from. I've spent an unable. Scott uh, Greenberg is unable to be here. Uh, Alan Greenberg. Thank you for coming in. My name is Alan Greenberg. 
Uh, I'm interested in the Conservation Commission. I've been actively, I was a member of the Conservation Commission as an associate member, as a full commission member, and as chair for about 11 years. Uh, I've continued as an associate member to be active, primarily working now on property acquisitions and working through uh, gifts, property gifts that have been offered to the town. Uh, I've also been very actively involved with our uh, stewardship of conservation administered lands. Uh, and I've just committed an awful lot of my life in recent years to conservation issues. I'm interested in continuing on. Thank you. Comments, questions from the board? What's your background? You, you talk about gifts and, and land acquisition. Is that part of your my background, professional background? Well, my professional background is completely different. Okay. Uh, other than an interest in environmental issues. Right. And I've done multiple workshops uh, ever since I got involved with conservation, which was about 12 years ago or so. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Frank Snow. Frank was unable to be here tonight. Thank you, Alan. Uh, Richard Torsney. Thank you for coming in. You're welcome. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. My name is Richard Torsney. I, I am a 15-year resident of Situate. I go back to Situate 40 years uh, since my first uh, exposure sailing 110, uh, competitively sailing 110 boats out of Situate Harbor. I most recently was a member for 18 months of the Hummer Rock Ad Hoc Committee that uh, helped with the overlay district in the, in the business district. And I do have a history of uh, contributing uh, going back to um, an, uh, the USA Olymp Olympic program, uh, raising funds for uh, universities and hospitals. And I sold a business that I built up over 14 years, a few years ago. And so I do have time, and I'm looking to put that time to good use and contribute. Thank you. Questions, comments from the board? Any specific background to conservation? Somewhat in that I've, uh, I've owned three properties in Situate that I've dealt with conservation from literally as far north in Situate as you can go to as far south in Situate. And uh, I think I've uh, handled those uh, well, learned from the process, and, uh, and everything worked out fine. Were those projects controversial or, or anything unique about those projects? Are they single home projects? Or and did they go through the approval process and all that sort of stuff? You know, they, they could have been controversial uh, in as much as others have had uh, tried to do similar things, but uh, the, it's the way that others went about it relative to the way I went about it. So it wasn't controversial. It might have taken a little time, but everything worked out fine. Comments from the board? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Jim Harmon. <clears throat> Jim, welcome. Thank you. Good to see you. I'll give you a little background. I've been in the town since 1972. Raised three children here that went to, um, well, actually one out of the three went to the school system in Situate. And for the past three years, I've been involved with the Senior Center, and I've been on the board for the last three. Prior to that, I was on the Council on Aging uh, part of the uh, program over there at the Senior Center. And uh, I believe um, down to exen extend the, um, the, uh, the board part of my responsibility for another three years. I presume that's the reason I'm here this evening. I was kind of thrown off a little bit when I received the letter, but um, here I am. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for coming. I've known Jim for longer than I'm going to like to remember sometimes. No, we, we don't want to remember those. Days. I don't remember that far back. For a lot of reasons, I don't want to remember that. Uh, and Jim's been on the board, and he served it well. Any comments, questions? Jim, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Joan Payne. <Pena. coughs> Council of Hi. My name is... Joan Paley, and I've lived in Situate for 41 years and was originally interested in serving on Council on Aging a year ago and was appointed 
And here I am a year later, and I would like to be reappointed for whatever number of years or terms you would you would like. But um, being on the on the Council on Aging for a year, I can see what needs to be done or what needs to be continued. I think there needs to be probably more programs introduced to the senior center. And um, maybe sometime along the way, even though I know economically it's not a very good time, we may be able to renovate the center or find another way to get a new building for the seniors. But that's just a few things. Thank you. Questions from the board, comments? Thank you, Joan. Thank you. Thank you. Audrey Reedy. Audrey, welcome. Thank you. Hi, Audrey. Audrey. My name is Florence Audrey Reedy. I only say that once somebody asked me why I didn't vote. They were looking under Audrey rather than my first name. <laughs> I've been in situate, I guess, longer than previous speakers. I've been here 50 years, raised six children, all in the situate school system. At this present time, I have 14 grandchildren all in the school system. But my concern is for the seniors, and I'm here to sit on the board of the Senior Center. I am an adult nurse practitioner with a specialty in gerontology. I have been a nurse greater than 50 years, and I've been a practitioner greater than 25. And I feel I could probably help identify the social, physical, all of the needs that seniors have and be a voice to promote them. Any questions? Questions or comments from the board? No. Nope. Audrey, thank you for coming thank in. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Reedy. Thanks, Audrey. Uh, Vice Chairman Murray, would you take the last couple and then go into the next? Sure. Um, yep, absolutely. Next item. Thank yep. you. Uh, next up is the Reverend Grant Barber. Reverend Barber here. Okay. And uh, I think that, is there anyone who's in the audience whose name we did not call? I feel like I'm back in, in the classroom here. Yeah. Oh, yes. I don't know if it's relevant. I'm here for the beautification Oh, yes. Okay, yes. Come forward, please. You are uh, Janet D'Angelo? Yes, I Oh, great. Thank you. Sorry. We, we passed over you early on. My apologies. Nice to meet you all. Yes. Um, I am a relatively newcomer compared to everyone else here. I landed in Situate about four years ago. I feel very blessed to be here. Um, and I noticed your ad in the newspaper, and I thought it was a great way to become more involved in the community. My uh, work is marketing and public relations, so I'm in the business of making other businesses look good. Um, I've served on numerous committees. I'm very active in my field, and I thought this was a great way to get involved. And uh, I know in these economic times, um, it's difficult to have a budget for such items, but I'm used to thinking very creatively when it comes to budgets, and I have to do that all the time for small business owners. So, Well, that's great. Beautification Commission, it's a small budget item, but it has a very, very large impact Absolutely. You know, per dollar. Everybody sees everything, and, and our current commission does a great job, and they historically have done so as well. I'm not sure. Are there, are there any positions available on this commission right now? There are two positions available. So. Well, I like to say presentation is everything, and um, welcome the opportunity to join the group. Any questions from the board? Two positions and two applicants. So <clears throat> your chances so are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say anything more. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't get out. I guess I lucked out. <laughs> there you go. All right. All right. Nice to meet you all. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for coming in. Is there any, anyone else uh, present that we may have inadvertently overlooked? Okay, great. Thank you. We will now um, move on to agenda item 3A, which I understand is a... Um, so in terms of appointments... Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Let me remind people that we'll be doing the appointments under uh, agenda item number 13 later this evening. Uh, you're welcome to stick around, of course, or you can tune in on channel 10. Um, you know, you all scurry home as fast as you can and switch back and forth between the Red Sox and the Selectman's meeting. Um, and... Uh, or if you're curious, you can call the Selectman's office tomorrow or, or email us and we'll inform you. Okay. Anybody did I need to add anything? I think we're good on that. Okay. Um, thank you, Tony, for bringing that to my attention. 
Uh, item 3A is the uh, in vote on the inclusion of a brochure in the real estate tax mailing. Mr. Agnew? I assume. Uh, yeah, as you know, the board of selectmen has to vote to include any stuff that is inside the tax bill. Um, this is to do with the community rating system that we have to send out. Twice a year, right here, sir. One, 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 one time a year we do it town wide, and one time a year we do it to the high hazard areas. Okay. Correct. So we need the board of selectmen to Thank you. include it in the tax bill. So we, used to, we used to mail it out ourselves as a set of piece. Then we're dealing it out with the water bill, which I guess we didn't need Board of Selectmen's approval. Then we switched to the tax bill. We need your approval to put it in there. Okay. Motion. So, okay. Motion. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve that the community rating system informational material, the floor brochure, may be included with the property tax bills according to Mass General Laws, Chapter 60, Section 3A. There's a second. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. against? Aye. Can I add a question? Uh, next Thursday night, uh, July 2nd, we're having a uh, uh, information workshop that relates to this community rating system. And it's going to be downstairs in the library at 7 p.m. And we'll have uh, town officials there and uh, state officials to explain this particular aspects of uh, uh, coastal hazards flooding. Construction techniques, uh, the uh, insurance uh, program, uh, community rating system, system uh, permitting in those areas. Also, Neil's going to be there, and I'll be there. So. Also, it will address uh, like repairing some of the walls or trying to, and what the community Actually, neighbors can do. Our, our uh, consultant that does most of the work on the seawall is giving a presentation on the seawall uh, program and, and situate and answer questions about individual walls and stuff that uh, neighbors might have. Okay. Thank you. Is, is this the flyer itself, or is it going to be better quality than this? That's, oh, the flyer's in color. Okay. Yeah, it's better quality. Great. Great. So there's a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Norton, back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Walk in. Any walk in? Seeing none, move right along. Uh, before we go any further, before we move along, I guess, as everyone's aware of, for the past six months or so, we're, we've gone through a strenuous process of, of uh, attempting to replace, replace our current uh, town administrator, Mr. Agnew. Uh, we, two weeks ago, <laughs> voted. Uh, tonight, we're, we're very pleased to be able to announce that uh, the agreement has been reached with Tricia Vincasey. Uh, who's here tonight with her daughter and husband, and maybe you could introduce them, Tricia. My husband, Daniel, he goes by Fitz, and my eldest daughter, Sarah. Welcome to both of you, and you also, Tricia, and, and we are very, very happy to be able to, to announce this tonight, that you will be starting on uh, July 20th. Tricia will be coming in once or twice before that to work with Rick and to, to just get a little up, we brought up the speed on a few items. But uh, she volunteered. She asked to come in tonight to see uh, how we work. I'm not sure that's a good thing, but. Yeah. Did she sign? Has she signed? <laughs> <laughs> and I made sure she si I made sure she signed before she saw us at work. Uh, any comments from the board? I again welcome you on behalf of the board, on behalf of the entire town. Uh, it's it was refreshing to us, as I know it will be to you, to realize that. Uh, the comments we got following the interviews that were on TV were all positive, and, and uh, I personally didn't hear anything negative, so that made my decision a lot easier. So, again, to the board, if anyone has a comment, please. I just. <laughs> Congratulations. I want to particularly extend my thanks to Rick, who has been absolutely uh, terrific and warm and welcoming me um, to fill his very, very big shoes. And um, the, this is my fifth visit to the town, and my whole family's been here now. Um, I am going to be living in the town, renting a home in an undisclosed location. <laughs> so, um, really um, looking forward to meeting uh, the residents and staff and board and committee members. And, uh, again, thank you for all your help and consideration so far. 
Well, we're, we're, we're like every town of the Commonwealth, uh, you know, we're not looking forward to with a great deal of optimism for the financially for the next couple of years. Uh, however, we feel very strongly that in you we have someone who can deal with those issues as they come up, and uh, as bad as things get, we'll get through it. So, again, thank you and, and welcome. And it's very pretty when it's not raining, so. <laughs> <laughs> Rumor has it. That's another, <laughs> I've forgotten. I, I forgot it. That's another thing Trisha said, that she would promise to bring good weather. There we go. Uh, as soon as she comes. <laughs> not snow. Not snow. Not for many months, hopefully. Uh, while I am digressing uh, a little bit from our agenda, if, with the board's permission, I'd like to take another moment uh, just to read a letter from the board to the outgoing town administrator, Rick Agnew. We have a, a, a uh, original copy of that letter in a folder. Uh, Kim didn't dare trust me with it for obvious reasons, so I will read the copy. Dear Rick, the Board of Selectmen would like to sincerely thank you for a job well done in your capacity as town administrator of the town of Situate for the past 19 years. Your daily commitment to the job was exemplary as evidenced by the respect you earned, not only from the Board of Selectmen, but also from your department heads, support staff, <coughs> and residents of the town. Your expertise in municipal finance has placed Situate in good financial position over the past two decades, which was a challenge during these times of economic uncertainty at both the state and national level. The board has especially appreciated your abilities as a great orator at numerous town meetings and as a great negotiator and as a great negotiator with the various unions. Your leadership on major town projects such as the water treatment plant upgrade, capping of the landfill, opening of the current transfer station, Widow's Walk Golf Course, Greenbush, uh, and the, uh, the Cliff Sewer projects and expansion and the new marina are all testaments to your ability as a super municipal administrator. Again, we thank you and wish you all the best for a healthy, happy, and well-deserved retirement. The town of Situa is a better place for your considerable efforts. And a sincere thank you. For thank you. <laughs> that, I'll give that to you. With that. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed it, Thank you. Uh, it is the original. It is the original. It's hard to believe. I didn't. I didn't forget still, about it. Put it still, letterhead left. Put it on top of the refrigerator or something. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we all have said it before. There's no need to be redundant and say it again. But I sincere thanks, and the, t the town thanks you also. Uh, the next. Item is uh, item five discussion, a vote farmers market. Who's here for that? Would you like just coming up and? Sure. Thank you. Just giving us a brief. Yeah, this will be very brief. Update on. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just um, stop. I'll good. Just I'll just stop by saying market. Clarity. Yep, Mark. How are you? About a year or so ago, Mark and some neighbors of his have approached me about. Uh, doing this very thing similar to what's done in Cohasset now in Marshfield and many other towns I think I mentioned it to you guys once or twice so having said that thanks for coming in yeah we just you know people have just basically backyard gardeners I see them a bunch of times and they're like you got 10,000 tomatoes I think we should have a community farmers market and get the ball rolling and we um, and dealing with it and figure going forward there's a lot of work to do on this yep. there's insurance I didn't know I did any of this stuff was in front of us and what we had to do. Um, try to get it going for this year, but I think there's a lot of work. We need a board of directors, volunteers, insurance, permits, license. So there's a lot of stuff to do that I was unaware of. But I think we can get that forward and get the word out and get people to hop on board. And I think the next year would be fantastic. Uh, I think what we're looking for from, from the board is a uh, an approval to go Sensible. forward uh, possible location and an approval if you, you guys give the thumbs up yeah uh, why don't we first get get a consensus and thumbs up Sean well I just 
most recently, about three minutes ago, I had a conversation with Neil Duggan. He had educated me a little bit on what needed to be done. And um, for, ex for example, Mark had originally thought about pr on private property, and Neil thought it would be better s on yeah. public property, yeah, such as... Yeah, that's to go through if it was on public right. town-owned property. And these, mm -hmm. these are just some of the things. So I... And anyone I had talked to on behalf of Mark to get the ball rolling said exactly what you guys said once or twice. It sounds like a great idea. When can it start? Mr. Chair? That's it. Wait. Yeah, I, I'm totally in support of this. And I, I perhaps one of the things you, you might need now is sort of a sense of the board that, you know, I'm not going to say I agree entirely to a farmer's market at this point because, as you know, there's a long way to go and there are exactly. all, all sorts of hoops we need to know where and all that sort of stuff. But in principle, I'm 1,000% I'm on board. Right. And um, at least one of us is, and I yep. assume the other guys are. And uh, I don't know what else is needed. At uh, this what point. I would suggest, and, and someone jump in if, if this is not correct, consider, unless someone on the board disagrees, consider where this is a, a go ahead. Okay. Do what you have to do. Find out what you have to do. Try to, between you and Neil, and all try right, to come location. up with a location. One of the locations was brought up of uh, the parking lot in North Situate that was the tennis court used to be at. Certainly not being used for anything else. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. the building there, the building there has electricity. Yeah. If we can talk to people who own the building, and then you know there was yep. people talking about bringing sustainable Situate in, and why don't you do that? Okay. Put something together and come back. Whenever. Whenever. Okay. Whenever you have something. Right. So and, and, can, uh, and then we can work. I mean, I know there's insurance, and I don't know yep. costs or anything at all. Yep. We're meeting again on the 23rd of, 21st of July. Okay. All right? All right. We'll a month. get the ball rolling, get a yep. month to get yep. something yep. together. Good Good just, okay. Mark, just a, as a um, another option, too. Um, <clears throat> If you'd like, I'll, I'll approach the uh, Chamber of Commerce, the Situate Chamber of Commerce. Yes. And of so course, yeah, there are two, the two things that um, from there is that not only from the Chamber standpoint, but also I know the merchants in North Situate would also probably take a look at it. And then trying to the try to also talk to maybe some of the other businesses who, you know, yep. who sell that, and others to try to Ronnie's get artists. Exactly. Ronnie's guys, doing the CSA and doing these yeah. other things. So I was thinking, Great idea. I'm yeah. certainly a total supportive yeah. of it. I, I think we should have it sooner than later. And maybe right. try to get it in the fall if we could. If we could, uh, hopefully yeah. we can get that ball rolling. And, yeah. So I'll, I'll talk to them, and, and if you'd like, I know uh, Ann Burbine's here. She's in the North Situate, you know, merchants. So to try to get more, get it going for <coughs> her. Okay. Do for for uh, Cohasset, outside people come in, right? People from other towns and things, and so they do. Yeah, so you might want to get the list of those people because they might be interested in coming in and getting right. their so little circuit going. And and they, yeah, yeah. They do Fridays with yeah. trying to figure maybe on a Wednesday. Right. So that will be good stuff. Permits. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, yeah, permits. Yeah, permits and all that. So Dr. Neil, I left a message with him. He left one with me today. Yeah. Uh, back. So he said it was on town all land. He would expedite the process. Yeah. You didn't see too many problems. Awesome, right? Conceptually, it's great. Go for it. And you okay. are. Angel Trafton. Ah, oh, okay. Great. George. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Gotcha. Go. The board? No. Neil's in now. All right. So yep. I'll just follow down there and talk. Great. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thank Good you luck, you guys. Good luck, see you. Good luck with it. Thank you. Uh, next item is a presentation uh, on the Situate Duathathathon uh, by Dr. Nico Infantsinko. How are you? Close enough. Close enough. I was about to apologize Thank you. if I Sir, uh, mispronounced it, but sure. I'm sorry I didn't have the full Thank you, presentation Nick. for you earlier. It's okay. Um, you'll find there's a couple maps in there. Those are Keep on estimates. Keep <laughs> uh, I just want to introduce real quick uh, Bill Burnett, who's our race director, as well as uh, can you in front of the microphone? Um, uh, yeah, if you want to move, if you could move over a little closer to the mic. He'll tell us where the He's picking everything up. Thanks, yep, uh, everything Bill, looks fine. Bill Burnett's our race director. He also is uh, the founder of Streamline Sports, which runs the Commonwealth Race Series. It's a f now a five race series in Massachusetts. Uh, probably best known nearby for the Cohasset Triathlon, which runs next uh, Sunday. So he's the race director and creator of that race, uh, which is a very smooth, well-run race. Stacy Zowell is um, a Hingham resident and is our kind of creative director. Um, I'm kind of local and marketing director for the race, so we're the board of the duathlon. Um, and basically I wanted to come before the selectmen and kind of present the race officially, try to make sure you guys understood what we're hoping to do, how we're hoping to do it, why we think it'll be good for the town, good 
uh, in terms of flow, um, resident support, merchant support, et cetera, and outline where we are to date so that as we develop the race, you guys have any questions, we can uh, go forward smoothly. Um, I'll try to pound through this very briefly, and you guys can take a look at it in more detail uh, at your convenience. Um, the major goals of the race are essentially to try and bring a major race to Situate. Um, triathlons, duathlons, race short, short leg races have become very, very popular and are still gaining popularity increasingly. Um, we think that it's a very good time to be starting a race like this in Situate. It is also a charitable uh, fundraising event which will donate to three very local charities which are outlined in page three. Uh, Friendship Home which is in Norwell which you may have heard of. Um, a foundation in Hingham called Women uh, Living Authentically and a foundation that's national but has a Boston chapter called Girls on the Run which supports uh, preteen girls. <coughs> Um, I'm more than happy to give you details on those, uh, but they'll be on our website, which is up and running, hopefully the end of this week, as well as there's some descriptions in there uh, to follow. Um, the race itself, we're hoping to run right out of the harbor. It's a complicated affair in a lot of senses, but we feel we are very uh, organized in the sense that we have tried to really funnel through the police chief's office um, very actively. We've dealt with uh, Lieutenant Ted Coyle, as well as I just spoke to Sergeant Gil Martin today. Um, we are trying to be on top of that as possible to make sure that traffic, parking, merchant flow, which is extremely important to us as well as obviously to the harbor, um, are, are issues that are right at the top of the priority list. Um, and so in order to make those smoother, we are really trying to work with people ahead of time very early on uh, and very professionally to make sure there aren't as many speed bumps in the road developing a new race like this. Um, some of the things that we've really taken into account, um, if you go to page, I believe, five and six, you'll see a course outline as well as a course map outline. Uh, I do want to stress this is not the final course. This is an outline generally of what we plan to do at this point. Obviously, uh, the DPW, police, fire will all have major uh, positions in helping us develop that in case there are issues for safety reasons, uh, for merchant reasons that need to be addressed as we finalize it. Um, but currently, we're planning to run out of the Coal Parkway lot. Um, we're planning to limit traffic uh, to a one-way direction through the harbor during the race, but it will be flowing as opposed to um, the St. Paddy's Day Parade and um, Harbor, uh, her sorry, Heritage Days, which tend to be a little frustrating to some of the local merchants down on Front Street. We're trying to avoid those issues as greatly as possible. Um, coming out, we're going to run out Second Cliff come back, transition, which means you go onto a bike, you leave the harbor out towards the lighthouse, up north Situate uh, into Minot, back down the inner uh, leg of Situate, back around Driftway to the harbor, and then get back on your feet and run out to the lighthouse and back. The reason for that course is essentially to try and make as much of the views of Situate, the beauty of Situate, some of the historical sites of Situate available to the racers and runners, <coughs> as well as to create an ability for the charitable foundations to have their own legs of the race, because we'll have some adults with disabilities that will be running the race, and they'll be running a shorter version out on Second Cliff, and there'll be the girls, the 13th, I'm sorry, the third to fifth grade girls that will hopefully be running a longer leg of the race out to the lighthouse. So in order to do that, we, we maintain the beauty of the race for those groups without losing the, the simplicity of the course. Um, in terms of course safety, I just want to touch on a couple of really simple things. Again, I'll mention traffic and parking because they're extremely important to us. We're trying to secure as many of the smaller and away lots as we can for people to come in so that race traffic itself is in and done prior to uh, <coughs> people having to come in last minute. Um, we're hoping to try and design parking systems so that people have designated lots pre-race so they know exactly where they're going so they don't have to come to Front Street in a car. Um, we are going to be having as many local lots in Situate, such as the St. Mary's lot, the Village Market lot and such, open to only merchant traffic. I haven't figured out how exactly we're going to do that yet without letting people sneak in there, but we're doing our best to make sure people that are shopping in Situate that day will be able to get in and out without walking 10 miles and without frustrating the merchants. Um, I'm working directly, we're working directly with the Harbor Merchants Association. We've already spoken to them twice. We're working directly with the Chamber of Commerce. They've already supported us and they've actually sponsored us. 
Um, and so, as you can see, we're trying to take as many of those steps as possible, as early as possible, so that we can avoid the, the, the frustration of the residents, the frustration of the merchants, and, and therefore have a very smooth professional race. Uh, one of the things that I'll say on Bill's behalf is that uh, his races are always a top scale, top shelf race. Um, he doesn't skimp on signage, he doesn't skimp on safety, he doesn't skimp on making sure that things like parking are afforded and handled so that people actually want to come back and do it again. Um, and we want this to be a major draw to Situate because the way we're building sponsorships, the way we're building the race expo after and during the race are specifically going to be designed to try and push people into our merchant's doors during and after the race. Um, that's something we've taken into account from the beginning because we actually want our merchants to benefit from this, not suffer for it. Um, I wanted to try and kind of hammer through some of that so that you guys had some time to ask questions. Um, if there are any now, I'm happy to Rick. take them and we'll, we'll have to. Nico, have you spoken to Harbor Master Mark Patterson? I have, yep. You have? Yep. Okay. Um, we actually are sitting down today's Tuesday, Thursday morning. Okay, to discuss great. the race specifically as well as a couple okay, of the reason I asked that is October 15th two days earlier is the end of the boating season yep. and so that's the first weekend after the marinas are all closed and so pulling, there's yeah. likely to be boats flying around all over the place particularly since the season as we know is so short the boating season is so short especially this year yeah especially this year so that, that's uh, yes, good you're sitting down with him on Thursday great. and um, Again, we're, we're trying to minimize those issues. Um, one of the things I'm trying to do is we really ideally would like to have Cole Parkway lot, the south side of that lot, to ourselves. Things like the boating concerns may be an issue. And again, I stress that that map is a work in progress because of those concerns. Um, but the reason is we want as few cars crossing bike paths and, and foot traffic paths as possible for safety, plain and simple. Um, the, there will be, I just talked to Lieutenant Coyle last night at length, there will be hopefully lanes for people to get in and out obviously to the Mill Wharf side of the parking areas because we want local traffic again to have ways in and out so they can eat, so they can shop, so they can come in and out safely and quickly. Yeah, I think it's a great, I think it's a great idea. You say 10.30 a.m. start, approximately how, time, how long these things last? Uh, well, the, the, the finishing racer should be somewhere in the, in the one hour, a little under an hour mark, and the last racer hopefully will be well under two hours. So it's basically I'm a two hour race. Hour gig, but you know. <laughs> uh, and one of the main reasons we did that was a lot of these races, uh, Cohasset starts at eight o'clock. And a lot, of, a lot of times you go to these races, and I think we all have experience with these races, you go there early, you get up really early, you're not bringing your kids, you're not bringing your spouse, you're not bringing anybody. You, you have barely time to get up and get, you know, put in your clothes on and get your bike in the car. And that's because traffic and other issues become more challenging. But we really want the race to finish so that people can get their kids there, can have their spouse, can have more spectators, more, more actual commerce traffic. And therefore, we end near lunchtime, which means people want to go to our sponsors, like Reva Restaurant, who I've already spoken to. We want to get those people involved so that they have a benefit of having 2,000 people looking for something to do at noon. That's great. Um, if we can handle the parking and traffic concerns, I think that's a huge benefit. It also has to do with the train traffic also. We want trains completely away from bikers, and the only time we'll cross is on Hollett Street because it's the safest tracks to cross up in North Situate. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that the first train's gone and the train coming back, we have about a 50-minute gap, which means the elite racers, the types of people that won't stop for a train or a car or anything, are already gone. And sure. the people that are just having a nice afternoon, if they're still on the course at that point, this, the police will be more than happy to hold them up, and I don't think there'll be any concerns. By that time, there might not be any weekend trains. Yeah. Well, they'll we'll just and be that's, charging us for them. And that's another question that, that's in the air, and that's maybe our, to our benefit, but we're counting on having to deal John? with trains. Um, you had just mentioned it earlier, a couple of things. <clears throat> the parking is the big thing. We, with our the last St. Patrick's Day parade, where parking was a huge issue. Yep. And just be sure that you address those, because you, you mentioned what made me think of it is people coming in to shop and before and after we get some not, not so nice letters that people are never going to return again yeah i, I from so. from the planning board and from the chamber of commerce i know about those letters and uh we're trying to avoid exactly that scenario 
And there was a race just a couple of weeks ago, and this yours know, seems like the short Right. Yeah. Is there any way you could work out of Peggy Beach parking lot like they did, or no? Well, it's just too much larger a race. Peggy right. Beach parking lot was pretty good for the short run. The mm -hmm. problem is they were just about at capacity. I don't know if any of you were able to go down there, but the, the race expo they had was really not that large, and it pretty much filled the entire lot. And they had 500 runners with only feet. Um, we're going to have at least 600, maybe even more runners uh, and bikers, and we've got 600 and 700 bikes, which means a big gated area. We're going to hopefully have a larger expo. Um, so it's really, at this point, I think impossible for us to run only out of Peggotty Beach lot. I have talked to Sergeant Gil Martin and, and Lieutenant Coyle, and you know, we're open to trying to figure out alternate ways of figuring this out. Um, but ideally, again, we, we thought about running this out of Egypt Beach or running this out of somewhere else, but I think we lose a lot of the value that town will get out of it, frankly. Now, there will be residents and there will be merchants that will disagree with me, I guarantee it. But that's why we're starting in June to really hammer that home and really get them on our side. Uh, one of the things I've done uh, as the marketing side of things is we're building a specific sponsorship program for only situate businesses which would be lower cost and higher benefit to those merchants that you won't be able to get as a Norwell or a Cohasset business because I want situate merchants yep. to support I, us. Go ahead. Just one other thing, Rick had mentioned it earlier, when you are talking to Mark Patterson, I'm sure he won't forget, but there are a significant amount of lobstermen that work out of that parking lot. Off and of that ramp. That's yeah. right, and in the fall and I want to make sure typically that when we, we figure out a way for that parking and that so in and both. out to happen. All right. And that's, again, where the police and DPW will come in to help exactly. us. Exactly, right. Tony, John, any comments? What, what sort of time period did you figure, I mean, you've got to set up all these expos and gazebos and stuff, so if it starts at 1030, that's probably 8 or something. You know, how, what's the time period that you think Cole Parkway is going to be closed? Well, I'll uh, kind of refer out to Bill. Right, so I, I, would, I would say at, uh, at first daylight uh, would be the need to start setting up their course. Mm -hmm. So, and then how long after the race? The race will end, you said, probably around 1230, maybe for the- Right, so, uh, well, in Cohasset, where we closed down within an hour. So after the last finisher crosses, we could close down um, soon. But the idea is to get, keep people around and keep the commerce in town, so. No, no, yeah, I just, what is your, I'm not just saying ideally, close quick, I'm just saying what, what so six to, to do, two, six to three? Uh, I would say six to three is probably yeah. fair. Uh, and we're going to hopefully, the, the police, I believe, work on four-hour shifts right now, the new contracts. So, um, so what we're ideally going to do is have a set of police officers that will be on two shifts, so an eight-hour shift. So if we have them from six to four, and then there'll be a shift of police that's only there from about 9.30 to 1.30. Mm -hmm. And they'll be managing the race itself. By the time, you know, by the time 12.30 rolls around, there's no more traffic on any of our roads, and basically all in, incoming outgoing traffic will be foot traffic coming in and out of the, the intersections. So at that point, we have a much lower need for police, and we'll still have all of our volunteers on hand, which with this race, I'm hoping to pull in at least 100 volunteers just for race day structure. Where are you getting these numbers? I saw 600 runners. Are they, where are they from? Are they? Situate Marshfield. Right. So what, what I think you're, that's a great question. What you're going to find is uh, actually from all over Boston. Um, we're we're going to attract the elite pro racers and also beginners and just want to get involved in the sport. So uh, I think it could be regionally, to be honest with you. And you've done, you did one in Cohasset, was it? And you had 600 runners there? Uh, Cohasset is this, it actually Cohasset's 1,100 uh, racers uh, from 24 different states. But I've been doing that for three years. I think right. the re reality with this race is I think we're going to get a lot of great regional people, uh, New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and here. Wow. A lot. Yeah. Anything else, Tony? No. John, wrap it up. Did you want to? I, I, no, I, I've talked to Nico about this before, and uh, being on the chamber, and I, I, I saw the map. I think the map's great. Um, Rain date? Do you have a rain? I assume yeah, it's going to no, rain or shine, there's, right? There's no rain date. We'd go rain or shine. And, and I will say, do talk, uh, Sean. Who should they talk to about the fish, the pier? <coughs> Not just, just the one Mark. down at Russo landing, but Mark. also on Front Street, because the trucks do come. So that's a, that's an issue you got to address. Yep. And again, I'm going to address that with uh, Mark on Thursday to yep. begin with, and if he has 
suggestion of who I need to speak to. I do know a couple of lobstermen personally. I'll ask them okay. what, what works for them. I think in wrapping this up, I think you're doing everything right. You're talking to everybody. You're way out in front as far as planning is concerned. Uh, my suggestion, I think I'm here from the board, you know, we, we welcome it. You know, again, as long as it's well planned and it sounds as if you're making sure that that's going to happen, uh, why don't you go just continue doing what you're doing? When you feel comfortable, a month before, six weeks before, come back in. Give me an update. Just give us an update. You're all you're ready to go, and here's the final <coughs> plans. And would that be a fair assumption? Well, what, what do they need from us? Do they need approval from us I to think, run the event? I think they need approval from us to 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 close the Clow Parkway on that day and use it. Mm -hmm. And use it for uh, nine to three, whatever it is, a part of Clow Parkway or whatever it might be. Uh, it's just like when the nights come before us. Yeah, so like the Heritage Days or whatever, mm -hmm. St. Patrick's Day Parade, I guess I'm not sure we... Yeah, and what I'm hoping to do essentially is, mm -hmm. again, I'll follow up with you absolutely. I'd like to have uh, the police chief or probably yeah. Lieutenant Coyle and uh, Gil Martin that really will be the liaisons running. I would, I would suggest um, that you continue doing what you're doing. If you run into any glitches, let us know so we, we, we don't want to, uh, you know, we don't want to give you a, uh, a blanket permission here to do it and then find out there are glitches along the way or the police chief is a problem. So once you feel comfortable that you're ready to go and everyone's in agreement to have a master of the police chief chamber and everything else. DPW. DPW, but, whoever. Uh, chief, chief judge too. Come back in and, and just show us what you have and Great. we'll, yeah. we'll close, for, we'll hopefully close Clow Parkway and, and uh, yeah. look forward to the day. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you. you thank you for considering Thanks. Good luck next week, too. A lot of work. You know, a lot of work. Joe, in the past with... Um, Thanks, Nico. I'm thinking particularly of Heritage Days and some of the issues we've had there. We've, yep. we've actually had letters written by the, the chiefs showing that they've documented it. I think we needed that for coverage to show that this was approved by the uh, public safety officials. Okay. We'll get letters from the department you know, heads. Maybe Harbor Master. Uh, as we get closer to as the As we game. get closer. Thank you. Uh, yeah, good idea. Good idea. Uh, the next one of the most unpopular things we have to do as selectmen is talk about rates and, and water rates and any rates and any potential raising of any rates. Rick, help me out. I think we voted four or five years ago to raise the water rates 5% a year. Well, we voted last year, I think. Two years ago, yeah. Two years ago, time flies. <coughs> Obviously, it's to fund the capital program for the business of the water, especially the, the line relining and replacing the new line. Yeah. And as you, as you know, we have a lot of complaints about the wrong water, wrong for the water distribution system. So, um, the Alan Jane put together this sheet that shows you the water rate increase. Also, it's interesting if we look at the comparison, the annual cost of the average family for the uh, water in the surrounding towns, the surrounding well, close to 11 towns, situated as third to the third cheapest, close to Brockland, which was 348, now it's just 350. The high being Cohasset, $1,200 a year. <laughs> They're not on NWRA either. <laughs> so, um, in any event, uh, again, this is to fund the capital improvement program, some of which we'll see later on in this uh, uh -huh. agenda. Al, any comments on that? Or? Uh, yes, um, as, as Rick said, two years ago, really uh, a major program started to begin to upgrade the town's ancient uh, water distribution system. And this predates me, but that time they started work in order to reduce or eliminate the brown water issue that we face every spring. Um, and we face that when the increase in flow stirs up all of the built up sediments in our pipe and that, that ends up uh, being in our homes. This project um, of replacing these pipes is paid for by the water enterprise uh, through the revenues that are gained. And each year we move forward with doing as much as we can uh, within the constraints of a 5% water rate increase. So tonight I'm here to discuss this increase of 5% effective July 1st, uh, and it will allow us to upgrade the next priority section of our water mains, namely the section on a section of Country Way, 
a section of Tilden and all of Stockbridge Roads. Those are in a priority plan developed for us by Weston and Sampson several years ago, the next most important ones, and, and that's confirmed by Mr. Babin, who runs the Water Department. Um, the new rates we propose are just an across-the-board increase. In other words, every, every step, every category. This means that the average uh, situate family's water bill will go up $17 per year. Now, to give you an idea of what average is, um, I'm a two-person family um, with no children at home. Uh, although I wash my hair every day, it's very short. My water bill is much smaller than this. My water bill tends to run around $200 a year. Uh, we've, this is based upon an average water bill of $333 per year. So if your water bill averages $333 per year, it would go up about $17 per year. Another way of saying this now, right now it costs 10, when this rate increase occurs, it will cost 10 and one half cents to flush your toilet 100 times. Today it costs 10 cents. So it's a half a cent for 100 flushes. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Why, why'd you pick the toilet as the you know? It's a metaphor here. I want to bring this home. <laughs> and a very You're going down the drain. I got four kids, so, so it's if you're a heavy flush, you'll pay a lot. <laughs> That's the daily in my this, house. Even, even with this, so it leaves our water rates among the lowest in southeast, uh, among all of our neighbors. Um, as, as Rick had said, after this 5% increase, uh, the average situate uh, homeowner would pay $350 a year for water. Uh, this puts us in the bottom 25 percent of, of our neighborhood. Um, only Rockland and Plymouth pay less than we do. Um, currently, Mar even after this increase, Marshfield, Pembroke, Weymouth, Norwell, Duxbury, Hull, Hingham, and Cohasset all will have uh, higher water bills. So we're, we're in a very good regime with a well-run department, I think. I think it, it has to be uh, remembered also that two years ago, as I was corrected, uh, we voted to do this. We voted to go into this program of increasing it 5% a year just to do exactly what, what <coughs> Al and G are talking about. So it, it's, 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 it's not a surprise to anybody, not a surprise to us. We realized we have to, we had to do it. We voted it. So. Rick? If I could also add into that, the Water Resources Committee, which Mr. Babin participates in, is chaired by Jeff Rosen and staffed by a bunch of citizen volunteers who are experts in this. They also fully endorse this 5% a year plan. Um, because they too acknowledge the 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 uh, total need for the infrastructure improvements, and and they've also studied the rates, and uh, they say we're, we're way down, and this is absolutely necessary. So our advisory committee has made the recommendation to us, and we discussed it two years ago, and here we are. Thank you, Tony. Uh, nope. The only note that I just so people understand, your rate goes up based on the volume of usage, and every one of those levels of usage is going up five percent. So there's no tier that is going to be affected any differently than another tier. Across the board. Sean? Just $6,500 hookup fees. That's still what that stays the same. Yes. Is it in a separate account in case Paul's watching? No, it's all in the enterprise fund. All right. Okay. When did that last go up? Five or six years ago. When, so when years we ago initiated it, I think five years. I don't think it's going up at all since, since we initiated it. It's... My, I think it was, <coughs> I believe it was for uh, building permits issued after September of 2001, I believe. A fair number of years. Hmm. Well, if it was that long ago. A few, a few years ago. Room for that? Yes. Is that? At least four years ago. Yep. Is that on the low side as well? No. Compared to other times? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Steve. <laughs> yeah, I got no. I have no clue. That That's was Rick Murray that asked that question. <laughs> John? No, that was a that, that was all. John Jenny. I, I, Go ahead. No, no I, I I mean we did it two years ago. We talked about it last year. I mean the reality is this is a necessary um, um, improvement, uh, no matter what the situation is, and it's a it's a minimal uh, approach to try to do it. So. Um, yeah, I'm happy. Do you want a motion, Mr. Chair? Love one. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to increase the water service and usage rates by 5%, effective July 1st, 2009. Second. Uh, further discussion from the Board? From the floor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you on that. Thank, Thank you. you, gentlemen. Um, uh, next is the uh, water give a contract for. Uh, whatever, engineering of the water main and 
country way. Yes, thank you. This is, as I mentioned just moments ago, we have a program to replace, clean, replace or clean and line the old cast iron pipes and the undersized water mains to eliminate the brown water problem. And, and it's, uh, it's admirable that you're following through on uh, the rate increases to, to really help us drive this um, issue out of town. It's, it's horrendous for our citizens in the uh, May and June timeframe. Uh, the next priority water mains to attack are on Country Way to clean and line the main from First Parish to Captain Pierce, and then on Tilden to install a new main from Egypt Beach Road to Turner Road, and then on Stockbridge Road, as I mentioned, to install an entirely new main to replace the old cast iron six-inch main, which is probably one of the first mains in town and supplies a lot of water to the downtown and waterfront and, and cliffs areas also. Immediately following the town meeting's approval of this article in April, the DPW initiated a request for proposals to respected engineering firms that we thought were capable of doing this. We received three offers ranging for $54,000 to $101,000 for this <coughs> engineering work. We're satisfied that the proposal from CEI meets our technical requirements and they will complete the scope of work within their offered budget. It's also to be noted that they are doing the, currently this year's engineering work and we're very pleased with the work. So therefore, we request that you award the contract to CEI so that they can begin work immediately and we will target to complete the engineering and obtain construction bids by January and the work will begin first thing uh, in <coughs> spring of 2010. There's a possibility we could actually do some of the work yet this summer on this new round of pipe work. That's great. Discussion for the board, Sean. Was there an estimate, Al? I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah. half. Yeah. Th that, they've got to be bumming. I'm sorry? They've got to be upset. They left half on the table. They left oh. fifty thousand dollars, fifty five thousand. Maybe they're not. They're they're glad to have the contract. Uh, the part of it is they by doing the work. They've done a lot of the work earlier on in terms of helping assess the system. So they're maybe perhaps more familiar with what the work needs to be done. Also, uh -huh. they're they're doing this year's engineering work, on the pipes that we're doing now, which are on will be on First Parish Road, um, et cetera. And, and uh, so they're familiar with the system. So they may may have felt more comfortable with with the work and therefore their estimate. They We've checked with them and they feel comfortable with doing it. And they can't come back and ask for more? No. No. Discussion? Further discussion from the board? No. Hearing none, I take a motion. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to award the engineering contract for the design, permitting, solicitation of bids and construction services for the water main rehabilitation on Country Way, Tilden Road, and Stockbridge Road. Two, comprehensive environmental link of Marlboro Mass in the amount of $54,450. Second. Motion remain a second. Discussion from the board? Discussion from the floor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, gentlemen. Thank you. Gene, see you later. Good night. Good night. Good night, Gene. L. Yes. Gentlemen, <clears throat> my next topic is to request your approval for an engineering contract to expand the town's municipal sewer system to District 1A. Now, District 1A. Uh, encompasses the residential area surrounding Musquashicut Pond. It was listed in the sewer master plan and the growth and connection plan as the priority, as it, the next priority area for sewering. Uh, the high density of homes, the poor soil drainage in that area, the presence of ledge, uh, the high groundwater result in inadequate protection of the surrounding wetlands, ponds, beaches, and yards from failing on-site disposal systems. Uh, DEP um, has designated uh, Musquashkit Pond as a Category 5 impaired water. Now, Category 5 is the worst. There is no number 6. Um, this is the worst grade, and they require um, mitigation or remediation for a whole list of impairments of Musquashkit Pond, including uh, pollution from failed septic systems. Uh, this was designated, designated by them in 2001 as this Category 5 impaired water, and, and we're, we're moving forward. That's why we're moving forward with this proposal. From a capacity standpoint, our wastewater treatment facility on the driftway has enough capacity to annex District 1A to the system, and this has been confirmed by two engineering firms. Specifically, our actual 12-month rolling daily average currently is 1.3 million gallons per day versus a limit of 1.6 million gallons per day. If adding these 301 properties in this district to the system will increase flows 
by only 0 0.06 million gallons per day. So we would go from 1.30 to 1.36 million gallons per day on the same for same basis. Now let me just jump Wait. in just for one. Yes, sir. Right. Right. However, having said that, homes that are on <coughs> districts that whether it be Cliffs or Greenbush, and I don't know how many homes are involved here, who haven't tied up yet, who have a right to tie up, we'd be getting close to an additional million gallons instead of the point six. Yeah, we're, we will be getting, we'll be getting, uh, we're getting to the point where uh, the continued I and I work is absolutely essential. We, we, we estimate that half of what comes into our sewer system mm -hmm. is not water that we sold to the customers in those homes that have sewer. I understand. Okay. But I, um, I, we I, have, I program hasn't been really working well. I'm sorry? I and I hasn't been working real well as far as I can recall. I mean, we've been putting a lot of money through no fault of your own. No, no, no. I and I uh, right? actually I and I is uh, I and I is uh, something that one has never done with. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we I've done quite a bit of research now with uh, uh, with the DEP actually on tell me who is the best at I and I and they say well best at I and I means that you work on it all the time because every system has I and I issues. Uh, I and I is of course um, manhole covers that uh, are open and let water come in at, from rain and it's underground pipes that are broken. Um, we uh, have a very um, we have a, a large amount of sum of money that we're dedicating to I and I and we've hired Weston and Sampson to come in and audit our entire I and I process thus far tell us what's gone well what hasn't gone well and how do we then change directions. Uh, what's happening with I and I thus far is that Basically, the, the folks that run the treatment plant have to go out in the middle of the night and start doing these inspections, and that's just too much demand to have to run the sewer plant as well as do inspections in the middle of the night when the tides are up or the rain, high, rain levels are up. So we're looking from them, what other approaches can we use to harvest more capacity for our treatment plant? Now recognize I said our treatment plant has half of what goes through there is not water we sold to the people whose homes are on sewer. So that means we have a lot of capacity available to harvest by finding the whole holes, yep. finding this water that's coming in. So I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not desperately concerned, given the crisis situation we're in with Musquashigat Pond, um, given the fact that this is six one hundredths of a million gallons, this is not going to put us over the edge. What will put us over the edge is failure on our part to do the INI work successfully. Thank you. I just want to be, this is, my comment was not uh, necessarily about the point six million. I guess it was more. Six. We got to continue working because we're getting there. We're getting to that point. Absolutely. Somewhere, it's, and it's not 1.6 million, it's probably 1.4.5 million. Yeah, That I we agree. have to say, you know, we're getting too close for comfort. But, uh, we hold our breath when we have rainy weather or high exactly. tides, when you which get we've had that. both of The number has gotten above exactly. 1.6. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Al, the, the reason I, I just, I didn't get an answer, I didn't hear the answer, my, my apologies. Um, Joe was saying that it did, in, in your calculation, did you factor in the people in Greenbush who have not tapped in or connected? Yes. Because obviously that numbers are going to change, and I don't know what the numbers are, but I was, in other words, even with those members or those people not tapping in, it's still there's enough capacity for them to tap in and if we go with Musquashka Pond. Yes, our, the consultant, engineering consultant who did that work, Weston and Sampson, has done both those other ones, have, have, have given us the advice that, that, okay. that given what's, what's coming with homes that eligible as, but as yet hooked up, Rose's Lane and uh, the 301 homes here, uh, we have sufficient capacity now, if we fail to do I and I work, we're going to go in the wrong direction. Okay. But that that it's we we would fail to go in the wrong we would go in the wrong direction anyway without doing the I and I work. Okay. 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 Now, um, the day after town meeting, we therefore went out to uh, town meeting. This was on the town meeting docket. So the day after town meeting, we went out and requested proposals. Got proposals from Ty and Bond, and from Weston and Sampson. <clears throat> the proposals were going back to your point, Sean. Uh, very close very close together. Um, tie and bond was $2,000 or less than 1% uh, uh, lower in price than Weston and Sampson. But, and tie and bond is a very fine engineering firm and we do some other engineering with them and we'd ask them to put, give us a proposal. Um, however, 
given the closeness of this and given the fact that Weston and Sampson has done our work thus far, they're very familiar with our systems, our people, our permitting history, and there will be some permitting issues with this because of the situation with the pond, um, and our requirements. Uh, we're very satisfied. Uh, we firmly believe, in fact, that the overall cost of the project uh, will be less uh, with Weston and Sampson doing the engineering work simply because they've been working on this before. They're geared up and ready to go. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, just a quick question, if I could. Back to the math. How many gallons a day on a typical home are you estimating? 110 per bedroom, isn't it? Well, that's Title V. That's not accurate. Yeah. Well, because this works, I just want to make sure, because this works out to 180 gallons a day per house. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Which actually seems about right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I, I did the uh, yeah. checks. Mr. Harris? You My done. concern, yeah, no, I, <laughs> Weston Sampson has been great, and, and, you know, I've had some dealings with Steve Peterson through Rick. My only fear was that we're okay by doing this, and Rick assured me earlier tonight that that's fine. We're okay. That was we're fine. talking $2,000 out of 230 so. Well, that, there's, no, there's no law that requires that you, that you avoid the contract for the law. If. This isn't a bid. And you've done this a couple times. Sort of consulting contract. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vignani? No, that yeah, was my we question. Go, we go and do the construction contract, and if there's $2 difference between the low bidder and the next low bidder, you have to yeah, avoid the low okay. bidder. As long as that person is qualified and meets qualifications from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you have to avoid that contract. So the I distinction the is between the those two distinction is okay, one is an consulting. engineering contract, which you don't even technically you don't have to bid. The other is construction. Uh, construction contract, which you do. So construction, you have to take the contract, which public works construction contracts comes under one law. Then you have building contracts, which come under Chapter 149 of the General Law, which is a different law. And then you have all these other things. You have design and selection laws. This, you, you, we go out and get estimates because we want to get estimates from, from, from companies to make sure that uh, everybody's on the up and up. But there's no law that says you have to avoid it to the low. Okay. Yeah. In fact, um, consult engineering and other consulting contracts, like legal contracts, uh, legal consultants are exempt from uh, Mass General Law 30B, which is this uh, construction contract. <laughs> um, the funding, as you know, would come from <coughs> um, betterments, as as all of our other projects. Um, we have a conservative estimate for for the entire project of 6.4 million very conservative based upon what we're getting from our engineering firms now it looks like we could we can uh, beat this cost significantly with a couple of different ideas about how we might approach this project and I think uh, uh, is the option opportunity for permitting is in front of us there may be some opportunities uh, maybe accelerated for some um, what do you call that design two percent money <laughs> yeah the revolving fund money may come back, but at this point, if, if we wait for re state revolving fund decisions, we'll end up with higher construction costs. We've done the math on it and said if you delay 18 months on awarding this contract, the cost to the homeowner is greater than it would be than the benefit of that the uh, interest rate. Is engineering is not eligible under the state revolving fund. Right. You have to do the engineering yourself, then the, then certain aspects of the construction is eligible under the state revolving fund. Um, in a meeting I had with Jack Hamp from DPP, who was involved with the state of the fund in the meeting last week, he strongly suggested that we submit this project again this coming August. <coughs> so I've asked Weston Sampson to give me a proposal to submit this to, to the state for, for refunding under the state of the fund and the, and the construction aspect of it. But the engineering analysis, you got to do the engineering with let's go now and one of the things that Jack told me was that yeah there's an awful lot of projects out there and a lot of projects that have been approved but not all of them have been appropriated by the various cities and towns right. so yeah the Bears might have a hundred and fifty million dollar project that they that they want done and got approved by the state of Obama fund but they haven't appropriated the money. In this project we have uh, probably three things going for us one is that um, it's been funded uh, I'm sorry it's been uh, approved by town meeting um, we have construction uh, or we have engineering uh, that we can get underway with an engineering firm that's done this before, 
and you have some very pushy people at town hall that can make this thing move along quickly. And then we may get in front of the money that's available from other ways. You know, the federal money is continually changing. So I think uh, going forward now is our best option, um, and, and it doesn't cut us off from deciding not to go forward later. Right. Uh, motion. Motion. Move the board to select and vote to award the engineering contract for the preliminary design, permitting, and final design and solicitation of bids for a wastewater collection system expansion for District 1A, Musquashka Pond area, to West West End and Sampson of Peabody, Massachusetts, in the amount of $230,764. Second. Discussion from the board? Can I just, yeah, no, no, just one quick question I've asked you before. When do you think? Time frame people right. could um, tie, start to tie in, and I'm not going to hold you to it. No, no, I know that. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are I, watching. I give out falsehoods all the time. Um, <laughs> the Called we start we can start engineering shortly. We could be done with engineering by d uh, January, and we could go out for bid in January. The issue is going to be permitting. If if uh, we can get the permitting done properly, and if we could put put together several things like we're doing this additional I and I. The relationship with Musquashkit Pond and some of the things we've done there to change the management of Musquashkit Pond um, to eliminate the need for uh, the strike pelleting, spraying situation, all that, and responding to DEP, that expedites, I think, our chances to get permitting. Aggressively, if permitting were available at the time that we're done with engineering, we could go out for bids in January and be looking at construction to begin next summer. Again, permitting is the big uh, thing I can call off on, be worried about. Um, okay, we, we, we made a hit of motion. We had a second. Uh, vote all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you on that. And we'll Thank you. And now for some excitement. I mean, I know you were excited about talking about water rates and yeah. sewer yeah. And, and that, but now um, Last December, the Renewable Energy Committee, chaired by Paul Reedy, uh, completed their extensive wind uh, energy study and recommended to you that we move forward with, with a project. And what they recommended specifically was, rather than us going out and buying a wind turbine, that we take a different tact, which is that we lease a piece of land next to the sewer plant on the driftway to a wind energy company. And that company would then finance, engineer, construct, own and operate a utility class turbine and that the town would then buy the power from the turbine at a reduced cost for use at the sewer plant and at other town facilities. And this would mean that our financial risk would be minimal. Our benefit might not be as great as if we owned it, but certainly the downside is far less dangerous than, uh, than the, uh, with this approach. So again, the very day after town meeting, uh, approved the, the leasing of the land for a wind turbine. We issued a request for proposals to the wind energy industry. We received three very qualified vendors who made proposals to the town. Um, Cabot Cabin and Forbes is a Boston-based developer. Uh, they proposed erecting a 1.5 or a 2 megawatt turbine. Uh, Solea Energy, a Woburn-based renewable energy developer operator, a subsidiary of Loomis Construction, proposed a 1.5 megawatt turbine. And NextGen, a Colorado-based uh, renewable energy developer, proposed erecting and operating on the site two 400 kilowatt turbines on the site. The Renewable Energy Committee, uh, the Department of Public Works, and our energy consultant uh, hire, uh, provided for us by the state um, Mass Technology Collaborative, that consultant, Kima, at we and the Energy Committee analyzed the proposals and interviewed all of the vendors. Uh, we evaluated them from the standpoint of qualitative factors, such as their experience, uh, their ability to obtain a turbine, which is one of the big factors, it's difficult to obtain big turbines, their financial capability, and their ownership structure, and what they intended to do with this once they owned it. Did they intend to keep a high equity stake, or did they intend to just then sell it off? Uh, and then last, also we looked, of course, at the savings potential of each one of the proposals. Well, the committee, <coughs> uh, with uh, others of us who participated, uh, unanimously recommended that the, the town proceed to enter into financial negotiations with the Solea Energy of Woburn to, uh, for a lease and a power supply agreement. And it's based upon uh, several things. One is this, they had superior economic benefits. Basically, 
in the 15 year life of this project, their benefit to us was between two and a half to five million dollars totally. Based, and the difference between the two and a half and five just depends upon what you think energy is going to do over the next 15 years. If you think energy will be totally the same as it is today, we would save two and a half million dollars in 15 years. If you think energy is going up at but 5% per year, we would save five and a half million dollars in that same time frame. So that was the, the, one of the very key factors. The second one is they have demonstrated experience. They already have several turbines spinning in Massachusetts. Uh, they, they have also were awarded the Plymouth project for two turbines, and they're working on a couple of other projects in the area. Uh, thirdly, their mission is to become a, what's called a fleet operator. In, in uh, other parts of the country, um, when you put turbines up, you put up a farm with 30 or 40 or 100 turbines. We don't have that capability in New England. You're going to have to put a turbine here, a turbine there, and a turbine here. The large turbine companies don't like to do onesies and twosies. They like to do the big wind farms. It's quick. You can go in one crane, put them up. Uh, this individual who has got a very good reputation is, in, is intending and has already demonstrated that he can put up onesies and twosies and make a fleet out of that and then pool maintenance and those sorts of things. And the last thing that was key, next to last thing, was that they have an equity stake. They'll own at least 30 percent of this five million dollar investment at all times and they, they also commit to include in the contracts uh, financially based guarantees to the town. In other words, they won't say, gee, this has a five-year warranty. They'll say, this has a five-year warranty and we're putting this money in the bank that if it doesn't produce, uh, if it doesn't have the requisite percent of uptime, then, and you're not getting energy from us, then we'll give you the savings from this bank account wow. to pay for the energy you're not getting. So if you agree to proceed as we recommend, as the committee recommends, then the, what would happen is the town administrator will hire an expert counsel uh, with specific energy in negotiate and specific experience in negotiating energy agreements and finalize the details. And we'll come back to you within two to three months with a proposed lease and power agreement. Um, and this work, lease and power agreement, and the, the legal fees would be funded by the sewer uh, enterprise, which is the sponsor of this project. So to me, it seems like the upside is um, we may have a project in, in, we may come back in two months with a very specific lease and energy agreement for you to sign, uh, author, authored by and uh, approved by attorneys who are working on our behalf. The downside is we spend a couple months, some legal fees, and we can't come to an agreement with them, and we have to go back to some of the other uh, proposers and talk to them further. So we would like to proceed with uh, this, and we need your approval. You feel confident, somewhat confident that you can reach an agreement? Sorry? You feel somewhat confident that you can reach an agreement? Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, the owner of this company uh, is, uh, uh, has participated in all the discussions and is, uh, has a very good reputation as a construction company. Loomis uh, Construction is very well thought of. Um, I've talked with my counterparts in Plymouth who negotiated the agreement for the two turbines with them. They're very pleased with how that went. Um, and we have an attorney that we've identified uh, who works for Wilmer Hale in Boston. He, the, uh, the person who is uh, the, the partner who is responsible for their energy practice is a situate resident, uh, participated in some of the earlier discussions with the Energy Committee. Uh, and I, and as I spoke with him today, he'd be willing to work with us. Question from the board, a comment from the board. I completely support this, and uh, I think it's great. I have some contacts in the energy, in the wind farm, in the wind turbine energy business, and they all speak well of this particular company. Oh, good. Tony, right, so we're just really authorizing you to negotiate with them? Yep. No financial commitment or anything at this point? And you got, I, I think you said this, unanimous support from the Absolutely. energy committee. Great. Good job. John, Thank John. you very much, Al, and the entire committee so far. Hopefully Bill. it keeps continues going forward. Bill over here was Bill. helpful, too. Yeah. Yeah. Bill is always helpful. Bill is. Like a motion? It's been yeah. a motion. I've been involved in it for a fair number of years. Yeah. It's good to see that the point where we're reaching out and we're about to grab that sucker and put it under drip. That's yeah. right. That's well, then we're going to ask you about the next one, but we'll do this one first. First, you get this one. That's right. Motion, motion to Mr. Murray. 
Move the board select and vote to enter into negotiations with Solea Energy LLC Woburn, Massachusetts for a property lease and power supply agreement. Second. A motion will be made and seconded. For further discussion from the board, from the floor. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Al, thank you. You're welcome. Al, while you're sitting here so long, can you do something about the weather? I mean, you've been doing everything for the yeah, last six or seven. Yeah. Uh, Al, DPW vehicle purchase. Yes. For my last exciting topic tonight on the agenda, I'm here to um, ask for your agreement to proceed with replacing three uh, failed DPW work vehicles. Um, the three trucks that, that I'm talking about uh, need to be replaced to ensure the safe and reliable support of the highway and grounds workers um, in, in their daily work of repairing the roads. We're not talking about glamorous work. We're talking about repairing the roads, uh, cleaning drainage, mowing public land, plowing snow in the winter, emptying the trash containers at the beaches, tending to the cemeteries, maintaining the public buildings, and uh, responding to emergency situations as they occur in the town where they can participate. All three of these trucks um, are incapable of in passing state motor vehicle inspection. So you could say they're improperly on the road. Uh, two of them are completely beyond repair because the frame because of the frame rot. Now these are, you know, if you have a pickup truck and you keep it in your garage, um, it, it doesn't get the same degree of use that ours do. Th these things are out on the beaches cleaning up muck uh, when there's an overrun as there is as there has been this week. Uh, so they rust out quickly. The third truck we have needs extensive repairs uh, to potentially pass inspection, but it seemed to me to be money that would be going down the drain. So we, are, we're used, we went to uh, the Plymouth County Commissioner's contract to take advantage of what were the best prices available, uh, and we checked the, the, the Plymouth County contract price with a large local dealer to see if we could get an even better price given the times. And they said they couldn't touch it. Uh, that the Plymouth County contract actually for, in this case, Chevrolet's uh, provided the very best price for us. And this dealer wouldn't, uh, couldn't make an offer on the three trucks, even though he'd like to sell his trucks. Um, the funding for this is, is somewhat unique. <clears throat> the, the replacement vehicles are to be paid for by the leftover bits and pieces of five previously funded articles. This is money that the taxpayers previously appropriated it was used on these projects. The money is, is out there already being borrowed, and we're paying interest on this money, and it's sitting in a bank account earning no interest, just waiting to be spent on these three trucks. The, uh, the town meeting authorized to this, so there's, there's no hang-ups there. These are unexpended balances to be used for the purchase of the three trucks. It isn't money we can use for something else. We can't go out and use it to pave roads. It's got to be used on something that has a certain project life. And I'm concerned that if we don't replace these trucks and we spend any more money on them, the money that we have to spend to keep them on the road, even illegally, is money that comes, will come from our strained fiscal year budgets coming up. Um, you will have to take money out of the taxpayers' um, uh, budgets of 2010 versus money that's already been committed. I just I can picture dollar <laughs> bills sitting in savings account saying, "Please spin me on trucks. You know, <laughs> this, this please get me out miss. of the savings account and buy pickup trucks." I do happen to have pictures of the trucks if you'd like them. Uh, well, the board might. I, <laughs> can I just ask your, Al your a marketing question? Oh, keep going. <laughs> sure, go right. ahead. Gas, Al. Gas, diesel, four these wheel drive. Um, All right. What these would be? These are not uh, lightweight, uh, little fluffy pickup trucks. Uh, these are three-quarter ton, four-wheel drive pickup trucks with a 9,000 uh, gross vehicle weight capacity. Um, uh, diesel engines, um, especially low-geared uh, transmissions, um, sn snowplow equipped, sprayed on bed liner. And the reason we want diesel engines is that we have diesel fuel at the transfer uh, or at the highway department, so we have our own supply of diesel fuel. We can buy diesel fuel in bulk. We don't have to run up to the gas station and get it and pay you know, somewhat discounted retail prices. Uh, but we can use our uh, state contracts for purchasing diesel fuel to keep these trucks on the road most economically. Mm -hmm. Utility beds or regular pickup beds? Uh, these will be pickup beds, but they'll be fitted by our mechanics with the extra equipment needed to make them utility vehicles. 
instance, for instance, we have to put, we have one that has a small crane on it so that we can lift up uh, mowers, uh, compressors, pumps, those sorts of things on the back of the truck. That truck is, you know, shouldn't be on the road. Did you say they came with plows or just prepped? They will be plows. Oh, for they will price? have plow cape. They don't come with plows, but oh. they'll be equipped for plows. Yeah. All right. Okay. John, any comments? Anybody else? No. Uh, just my usual comment on this, and I fully appreciate the unusable, they can't get a sticker, they're falling apart, and, <laughs> and I understand that. But just keep in mind, sort of like us, sort of like us is right. Uh, keeping in mind one thing that you know, two weeks ago, the school business agent came in. Yeah, I was going uh, oh, yeah, to say, is it? Yeah. You know, and, and, and <clears throat> we, we, we had some serious concerns, and, and, and he acknowledged those concerns, and uh, it, it can't be automatic, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Not in this day. Years ago, it could be automatic. People came in, you want a truck, you got a truck, there's plenty of money. But from now on, things can't be automatic. These here are obviously with 250,000 miles and 225,000 miles. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a serious issue. Uh, just keep in mind, again, what we said, even though this money's coming from old articles sitting around in banks someplace, uh, it could be used for something else. I'm not saying this isn't a priority, it is a priority. But we have to, as a town, as a town, that means from department heads to, to uh, workers in town, to board of selectmen, to town administrators, keep in mind that we just can't go along in business as usual, financially. We can't do it. It's, it's uh, having said that, my little... It's not going to cost $5,000 more, right? We, um, for instance, we were, we're going to hold back on the on the bucket truck, um, which was appropriated at town meeting. The uh, bucket truck, we're looking at a number of options on. Uh, remember, I, I yep. told you before the bucket truck is in dire straits. Yep. Uh, we're looking at um, the used bucket trucks. There's a very good market out there now for vehicles that are <coughs> four to five years old, sixty to seventy thousand miles on it, uh, at least uh, half the price of what we would pay for a the bucket truck we would specify. Additionally, through the uh, town manager, we were, we've begun to work with other towns uh, on could we cooperatively look at a bucket truck. One of us buys it, the other ones rent it uh, from us. And so uh, several towns have expressed interest in that. So that will lower uh, the net cost. So we were gonna, we're gonna hold off on that, try to develop a real much better proposal uh, for your consideration, understanding the, the difficult times that we're in right now. Thank you. That's, that's the type of thinking I think that I'm, I'm looking for. Uh, okay, that's all. I, have I think. Else. Yeah, I think the one difference is, you know, the, the school committee came before us and said that the buses are still usable. Yeah, I know. And, you know, I, and, yep, yep. and he's coming before saying they're not they're usable. Not usable. So and, I, that's and I fully appreciate that, and I agree with that. And uh, I guess what I'm saying, the bottom line is, we have to be very vigilant. Yes, sir. But that's all. Motion for, or for the comments, whatever. Sure. We have to decide if Al's just a better marketer than Paul is. <laughs> <or> if, uh, <laughs> Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for the purchase of three utility pickup trucks for use by the Highway and Grounds Divisions to Liberty Chevrolet of Wakefield, Massachusetts for a total amount of $88,210, less $300 for the trade-in of the old vehicles. Second. Screw the discussion from the Board. From the floor, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, next agenda item is agenda item number 12. And Al, you have nothing to do with this. Feel free to stay, though. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Al, you want to be on the planning board? <laughs> this is a announced vacancy on the planning board. Uh, I will, uh, somebody read the letter. Uh, John, you want to read the letter from me? Sure. This is a memorandum from um, Donna Chisholm, the uh, Planning Board Chairwoman, uh, to the Board of Selectmen, June 11th, 2009. The Planning Board is in receipt of a resignation letter from an associate member, Mary Patricia Brennan Finney, dated May 26, 2009, and received in our office June 8th, 2009. At the June 11th, 2009 meeting, the Planning Board voted to declare this position vacant. We would appreciate the Board of Selectmen keeping the Planning Board infer informed of any applicants 
or applications received, and we look forward to working with the Board of Selectmen in selecting an applicant to fill this position. Thank you. What we do in this case is we uh, invite uh, residents to, to, to apply for the seat. Uh, the Board of Selectmen, along with the Planning Board, uh, meet those candidates in vote and uh, the candidate getting the, the majority vote or the highest vote uh, serves on the Planning Board. What we'd ask the press to do, I guess, is to announce this vacancy uh, have any interested parties send uh, their uh, their resumes or letters of interest to Kim Donovan. She'll share those with the planning board. What kind of a time frame would we like to put on this, gentlemen? It says July 21st. July 21st, all right, that's our next Just meeting. Yeah. Our next meeting. Right, but excuse me, um, mm -hmm. By the 15th of July, Brian. And it's a one-year term. It'll be a one-year term. Um, no, it's for the next election. Yes, the next election, then they'll, they'll vote for a new one. Is there anything else we have to uh, include in that? Good. I, I apologize for coming in late, but you did mention in some social positions. Correct. Yes. You did, yep, yep. Um, and that we would meet with the planning board, and uh, together we would vote a candidate. Quick. All no right, motion. so motion, please. No motion. No motion needed. No motion needed. Makes it even easier. Uh, the 21st bill. We'll ask the play board to sit with us a moment. We'll get to the associate. Uh, next, the annual appointment process. Earlier this evening, we met with. Uh, some good candidates, some interesting candidates. It's so refreshing, it really is, to sit up here and, 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 and see people come in, new residents sometimes in particular, uh, who want to get involved. It's a very difficult, one of the more difficult decisions at times the board has to make uh, because there's, like so many things that come before us, they're, they're good, they're all good, and, and, and all these candidates are good. Uh, but unfortunately, there's only a number of seats available. In some cases, we have four or five candidates uh, vying for one seat. So it's not an easy decision on the board's part. And uh, we take recommendations from, from other people. We take recommendations sometimes from the board that uh, the person applies to. Uh, and, we, and we kind of put all those things in a, in a kettle and we make our decision. But again, there's so many good candidates that it's, it's, it's not an easy decision in many, many cases. So. Thank you to all that applied. Uh, if you're not appointed, please don't get discouraged. It's only because there's, there's only so many vacancies on that particular committee. Uh, we try to keep the, we try to keep the, the uh, letters of interest. Uh, so next time that position comes up, we have you on file. Uh, having said that, we will, uh, Start the process with the veterans agent. I move that the Board of Selectmen appoint Emil or Emil M. Carlo, agent of veterans benefits, custodian of veterans graves. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Keep in mind that these these uh, Kim these appointments we're making now are uncontested. Is that the first ones, or are they not? Are they not in particular? They're no, I guess they're not in particular order. They're just sort of yeah. alphabetical, okay. it looks like. Animal Control Board. Move the Board of Selectmen reappoint Diane Toshi and John Joan Hopkins to the Animal Control Board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Move that the table. Board of Selectmen vote to reappoint Joyce Farrell, Kathy McCormick, and Maureen Marl to the Beautification Commission. I second that. Also, we have, uh, when you want to vote on that, we'll vote on that. Uh, when you want to do it all as one. Also move to the Board of Selectmen appoint Janet D'Angelo and Stephen Dorsey to the Beautification Commission. Second. Uh, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Question? 
question. Do we still have two openings now, Kim? Yes. No. Okay, so that we had four. All, all right, so yes. okay, so we still have two. Okay, so that's what that means. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we may have to go over that, Kim, so we understand it when we get some of these. Okay. Sorry. No, no, no. Again, we, we bring this up just about every year at this time, and uh, just want to commend uh, Connor and the whole the whole committee for the extraordinary job they do throughout town. Uh, it's, sometimes it goes unnoticed. We drive by some of these islands, and we and we don't we don't notice how beautiful they are. But they didn't get that way uh, by themselves, and and in many many cases they didn't get that way. Do anything the town does. It's, it's strictly this committee, and uh, it's, it's a credit to them. So thank you again. Next, move the board of selectmen reappoint Michael Vaza to the board of health. Second. Second. Uh, discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Move that the board of selectmen vote to reappoint William Francis to the board of registrars. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Unanimous. Move that the Board of Selectmen reappoint Megan Sommer and Jeffrey Dugan to the Commission on Disabilities. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Again, just to uh, make note, there are still mm -hmm. some, some openings on this important commission. Uh, four three-year positions in an associate position, Kim? Yes. Are still open, so... Yes. If you are interested in serving on a committee, uh, and especially the Commis Com Commission on Disabilities, there are still openings on that. Uh, move the board of selectmen. Move the board of selectmen vote to reappoint John Bowman, Paul Scott, Joshua McCain, and Joseph Wood to at-large positions on Community Preservation Act committee, and also move that the board of selectmen appoint the following group representatives to the Community Preservation Act committee. George Trafton from the Housing Authority, Peter Levitt from the Historical Society, William Limbacher from the Planning Board, Frank Snow from Conservation Commission, and Nancy Ivis from the Recreation Commission. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Move that the Board of Selectmen reappoint Scott Greenbaum and Frank Snow and appoint Richard Torsney to the Conservation Commission. Second. There's a motion been made and seconded for Scott Greenbaum, Frank Snow, and R Richard Torsney. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Uh, didn't, did not pass. I'd like to move uh, to reappoint Scott Greenbaum to the Conservation Commission. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Move to reappoint Frank Snow. Uh, second. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Move to appoint Stephen Bajorklin. Second. Discussion? All in favor? I'm, I have some discussion. Comment. Just a discussion Comment. on this. Yep. I'm concerned about appointing Mr. Bjorklin to this. He is applied to another panel which I think he is probably more appropriate for and I'm concerned because of he is a developer in town and I think there's a fundamental conflict of of interest and certainly conflict of goals in appointing a developer to a commission whose stated goals is for conservation and uh, he is appointed already as an associate member and uh, I would prefer that um, we keep it that way and bring in some new blood uh, to this commission. Thank you. I, I agree with Rick in terms of uh, the conflict of interest. We've talked about this in the past, and um, I just don't think that's a proper place to put um, a developer in town. So that's my opinion on that as well. Again, thank you. Uh, motion's been made and seconded. All in favor of uh, Steve Chalkland. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nay. Nay. The vote is three to two for Mr. McJorklin. Uh, constables. Move that the Board of Selectmen reappoint Donald Ladd and Michael Moore as constables in the town of Situate. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Council on Aging. Move that the Board of Selectmen reappoint James Herman um, and Audrey and appoint Audrey Reedy uh, to the Council on Aging. Second. Discussion? Audrey Reedy is the yep. nurse. Yep, she's the nurse. Yep. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Fence viewer. Move that the Board of Selectmen reappoint Jason Harris as fence viewer. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen reappoint Neil Duggan as field driver. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Will the Board of Selectmen reappoint Harvey Gates and Elizabeth Mesner to the Historic Commission? Second. second. Motion to be made and seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Will the Board of Selectmen reappoint Lieutenant Detective W. Michael Stewart as licensing agent? Second. Any second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Move that the Board of Selectmen reappoint Ann Burbine as the town's representative to the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission and the South Shore Coalition. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, this next one, John, do you want this or want me? Can I take this? Act we, sure. No, that would be no, fine. Instead John. of John Danny is on the Plumber County Advisory Board, it would be Joan Norton. So I'd move that the Board of Selectmen appoint Joseph Norton to the Plymouth County Advisory Board. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 MBTA Advisory Board Representative. Move the Board of Selectmen reappoint Al Baggard as the MBTA Advisory Board Representative. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, quickly, discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen reappoint Joseph P. Norton Jr. and Joseph P. Norton as the alternate member to the North River Commission. I'll second that. Discussion? All all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Move that the Board of Selectmen reappoint David, uh, David Deneen and Michael Fournier to the Public Buildings Commission. Second. Second. Yep. Second. Second was made. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Move that the Board of Selectmen reappoint Nancy Ivis to the Recreation Commission Second. and appoint Rob McCary to the and Rob, I'll just go with those two. And Rob McCary to the Recreation Commission. Second that. I just have a question. I'm confused as to what the numbers of people here we're appointing are. I, I understand the Nancy Ivis, and I don't have any, any, anything wrong with what Mr. Vignani said with Mr. McCary. Are we supposed to pick? one of that list or more than one that list? Where are we headed? Three total, right? Three, three oh. total. No, three. excuse me, actually, there are, there are four. So if you, if you reappoint Ms. Yeah. Ivis, there's still three full yep. positions available. Correct. So in other words, the three candidates okay. can be... Can I restate I'm that? Sorry, yep. that wasn't clear. Move the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Rick. Uh, reappoint Nancy Ivis to the Recreation Commission and move the Board of Selectmen um, appoint Steven Svensson, Robert McCary, and Chris Roberts to the Recreation Commission. Second. Sec. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. District Cultural Council. Move that the Board of Selectmen reappoint Nancy Murphy, uh, Murray Young and Juliana Dunn to a three year term on the Situate Cultural Com uh, Council. Further, move that the Board of Selectmen reappoint D.D. Um, Sprecher and Christine Peters to a two-year term <coughs> on the Situate Co uh, Cultural Con uh, Council, and further move that the Board of Selectmen reappoint Colleen Ellis to a one-year term on the Situate Cultural Council. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Will the Board of Selectmen appoint Joseph P. Norton, Lisa Fenton, William Limbacher, and Al Banger to the Street Acceptance Committee? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Will the Board of Selectmen reappoint Al Bangard as Surveyor of Lumber, Measurer of Wood and Bark? Second, Second. that. C quickly. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Um, Next. Move. move the Board of Selectmen reappoint Mary San Satino as the Assistant Town Accountant? I'll second that. Motion be made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move that the Board of Selectmen reappoint Paul Scott, 
Alfred Elliott, Mark Thompson, uh, Dorothy Cook, and Karen McDonald to the Traffic Rules and Regulations Committee. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Water waste. Hmm? Move that the Board of Selectmen uh, reappoint John Murphy, William Schmidt, Stephen Smith to the Waterways Commission, and further move that the Board of Selectmen appoint Richard Eckhaus to the Waterways Commission. Second. Motion be made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Mr. Chair, for the Water Resource Committee, I believe that there is actually not a vacancy on that panel um, going by the Town of Situate annual report that I just reviewed with uh, Ms. Donovan. So um, I would make a motion that the Board of Selectmen reappoint Jeffrey Rosen and Hart Peterson and further the Board of Selectmen appoint Michael Higgins as an associate member to the Water Resource Committee. Second. Yep. Uh, motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Will that the Board of Selectmen reappoint Sarah Trezas as a full member of the Zoning Board of Appeals? Second. Okay. In, in Brian Sullivan. I was just kidding. <laughs> well, actually, actually, could you do it separately? No, no, seriously. Actually, actually Mr. Dan, he wants this done. Could you actually do it separately? All right, Because I'm okay. going to recuse myself from voting on All right, Sarah okay. Trezas. All right, okay. All right, I will uh, move to reappoint Brian Sullivan. I want to see if he was paying attention to the Zoning Board of Appeals. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor of Brian? Aye. Aye. I'll probably not phrased correctly, all in favor of Brian, <laughs> but nevertheless. In so <laughs> in move, the board of selectmen, oh, move, move the Board of Selectmen appoint Sarah Trezice, reappoint Sarah Trezice as a full member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Second. By anyone? Second? Second. Looking for second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. I'm going to abstain Aye. from that. Thanks, Kim. Four, yes, no zeros, no no's, and one abstention. Uh, zoning Review Committee. <clears throat> Move to appoint Richard Dennis. How many do we? Only one, actually. Oh, all right. So, okay, um, I'm sorry. Let me just. Move the Board of Selectmen appoint Jennifer Orham to the Zoning Review Committee. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I guess I. Uh, yep. Aye. There's a third? Yes. There's a third. Aye. Uh, there's a fourth. <laughs> uh, Jim Anderson, I guess. Uh, next. Current list of vacancies. Commission on Disabilities. Beautification Commission. Commission and bylaw review committee. There are still openings on that. Uh, we encourage anyone to uh, to apply. Will, will there be any associate members on the zoning review committee? We didn't state that. But I'm just asking that question. The bylaw. The yeah, the zoning. By Law Review Committee. I think you have, excuse me, but I think you actually defined what that committee was. I know we did. Right. I guess what I'm asking is, is do we have intention of putting any associates on? Temporary uh, committee, I think it'd be in the room. No. The committee's going to be resolved within the year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think, I think if there are, we had a number of applications number of applicants here okay and many of them you know I know personally and and would be you know equally good I think these people who have expressed such an interest should be reminded and and just be encouraged to participate in the meetings and participate in the discussions they're going to be open public mm -hmm. meetings any citizen can attend and any citizen can have a, a great influence on on this very important committee so just because we didn't select one of them or okay. just because we didn't select five of them doesn't mean they still can't be influential and participate in discussion in a proactive way. Fine. Uh, other business? Is that no. it with Sean? No. Sean? No. No. Nope. Thank so you. Murray. I got a parking ticket in a town on the Cape. And uh, <laughs> it was, uh, I know. 
No, it was interesting. I went in, I stuck a bunch of quarters in the meter. No, seriously, I stuck a bunch of quarters in the meter. I had to stick five dollars worth of quarters in that meter. I still got a parking ticket, and the ticket was ten bucks. And I said to myself, why stick all the quarters in the meter? If I'd known that, I would have just gone in and not put any quarters in because 10 bucks is a pretty good rate, which made me think that town is going to be losing a lot of money. So that's at university. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Which made me wonder, when have we last looked at our parking ticket fees, and are they... Are they appropriately scaled? I know, and looked, was that a, was that a I know year? this is a real popular subject, but I mean, but seriously, I mean. Was that a year we looked at the beach parking? I think we addressed that. We just upped those parking fees. Yeah, I think we just did. Was that a year? Okay. All right. Okay. And we're looking to handicap up to 100. Excuse me. Okay. Good. Re fairly recently. Good. Right. Just, that's it. That's it for me, Mr. Chair. Couple. We're, we're sorry about that. <laughs> no, seriously, it caused me to think. I mean, ten Funny. bucks. I mean, yeah, ten bucks is ten bucks is right. Yeah. Right. Uh, couple, was it, Rick? Was that? Was it? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Probably figure it out. A couple quick things. Um, first, I just want to. Uh, last meeting, we discussed um, um, contract or, or the union negotiations with the school and. Um, the school committee, and I'm happy to announce today, as most people maybe know, that, that they did come to an agreement. Um, it was announced at the school committee meeting last night. It was ratified so that the um, um, teachers, I don't know all of the details in the out years, but at least in 2010, they are going to take a pay freeze. And um, the large number of teachers that were going to be um, eliminated from the system, the majority of them, I believe, are going to stay now. So that's congratulations to the school committee. and. The STA, the Situate Teachers Association, for getting together and making that happen. I know there was a big outcry from the parents, and thank them also for for showing their support to uh, getting the best education at Situate that they can. Um, a couple other quick financial things: um, we just got out today new numbers from the state. They change daily. Um, actually, this was one time when they changed in our favor compared to what the uh, Senate passed, you know, a month ago. So, um, anyways, it's still a moving target. Um, we've talked to Rick in terms of what, if these numbers come in, where they're suggesting they're going to come in, what the town side is going to have to do to um, make the budget work. Um, we've mentioned the school as well. So there is still going to be a deficit in terms of, uh, you know, in hundreds of thousands of dollars that both sides are going to have to make up to make this work. But um, I talked to Rick today. I don't even know when the final numbers are going to be. I would assume it's got to be soon, seeing as the year ends in a week. But, um, but just an update on that. Um, further on that note, I met with uh, Rick and Mary probably about two weeks ago. And Mary is going to start getting us um, on a monthly basis um, financial information together so that we kind of have an executive report to look at to see where some of these variable expenses are going to be coming in at um, local receipts, um, collections, and just expense items from different departments. So what I, what I you know, suggest that we do and then we all I guess could vote on it in terms of um, having her come in on a monthly basis and actually take the time to review this sort of stuff and see if we're on track in terms of um, certain budget items that people want to look at certain expense items maybe overtime um, revenue numbers to see where we stand in terms of the financial forecast so that nothing really comes as a surprise to us so and obviously Patricia will be heavily involved in this in the in the upcoming week so um, Thank you, Rick, for, for your support and your, and your guidance through this process. Um, and thank you for Mary for getting all this stuff together. Right now it's a very thick report, and I think that's too much for us to digest. So I'm looking for a one-page report that has 10 or 12 key indicators that we want to know that we can look at and understand and, and really uh, um, make sure that we're on track. That's all I have. Dr. Tony, that any correspondence? Uh, uh, John, well, actually, I did want to, um, Mr. Chair, just mention that um, um, the Council on Aging, um, Florence Tote wanted, you know, to at least acknowledge and, and, and let people know that uh, the Senior um, uh, Softball League had gone and painted the front of the Senior Center. And if you drive by, you'll notice that even the signs, uh, the sign was actually painted. It looks very nice. And uh, commend them for doing that, donating the time to do it. And um, just again, thanks to the uh, Senior Softball League for doing that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, correspondence, I don't believe there is any. No. Nope. Uh, minutes? Motion on the minutes? Sure. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the minutes of June 2nd, 2009.
second. second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. The board will now uh, go into executive session for the purpose of discussing some pending litigation. Uh, thank you all for your attendance. One quick, uh, Present. Before, before we do this, just this is Rick's last uh, moment at, at the meeting. I just want to take a second to say thank you. Um, for the last eight or so years, we've been on but but it heads on a lot of issues, but um, you've always impressed me with your knowledge of the, the way the whole system works and your knowledge of how our town works, and I think your financial guidance over uh, at least the, the decade that I've looked at stuff has been superior, and best of luck uh, in your next endeavor. <laughs> Not likely. Uh, again, thank, thank you, you. We're going to executive Bill. session now. We'll take a we'll take a two minute two minute break. Two minute break before we go into executive session. Bill, hold on. Can I?